One of the most commonly used audio special effects is the parametric EQ. And I think it's one of those effects that you, you really would benefit from learning early on when you're working with nonlinear editing systems because you can apply it to so many different kinds of media. And very often, it'll be your first port of call to just tune up and improve the sound quality of your mix. Now, I've got a perfect example here of a situation where you might want to use the parametric EQ. I've got some music and I've got some voiceover on a timeline. It's a pretty blank timeline, I must admit, but at least you can hear what's going on here. Now, I've dropped the overall level a little bit, so it's not too overwhelming, but if you have a listen, we've got a problem. And the problem is you can't really hear the voiceover because of the music. Byron Hovelli, frustrated with what life has to offer. Rachel's perfect. Now, audio level is measured in decibels. Uh, we're moving towards a new scale, the loudness scale, uh, but broadly speaking, we can still think in decibels. It's a very similar scale, in fact. But the tonality of sound is measured in hertz, which is a measurement of things that happen multiple times per second. So, for example, in North America, the electricity supply is 60 hertz. It's an alternating current operating 60 times a second. It's 50 hertz here in the UK. The lower the frequency of the audio, the lower the tone. And we can hear from around about 20 hertz up to about 20,000 hertz, or usually probably a little bit lower, maybe 18, 18 and a half thousand hertz. But in terms of the important information in sound, or in particular in speech, most of the detail is around about the 1000 hertz range, the one kilohertz range. And a lot of the energy in voice is between about three and 500 hertz, but music can go right the way across the spectrum. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull down this parametric equalizer effect, which is under the audio filters category in the effect palette. And I'm just going to drop this onto the music. And what I want to do is create a gap in the frequencies of that music where the important bits of the speech are, around about one kilohertz and perhaps a little bit down from there as well. So I'm going to go into the parametric equalizer effect. And I think it's fair to say if you're not familiar with this interface, it can look like a little bit of an overwhelming wall of buttons and controls, but actually it's a repetition of three controls, band one, two, and three, against a very simple graph. So on this graph, although it's not marked along the edge, the left edge represents low frequencies and the right edge represents high frequencies and you can see these measured in numbers in each of these bands so we've got a marker at 100 hertz that's 100 times a second one kilohertz that's a thousand and 10 kilohertz which is of course 10,000 and then on the left axis we've got a decibel measurement so we've got up to plus 18 db and minus 18 db adjustments so what are we going to do? Well, down at the bottom, we've got band one, for example. We've got a specific frequency for that band, and we've got an amount of gain adjustment. Now, gain in this context doesn't just necessarily mean making it louder. It can also mean making the audio quieter at this frequency. And then we've got a Q control. Now, the Q control is for bands rather than low controls or high controls. So I'm gonna set this to a band option, and now I've got a Q adjustment, which initially doesn't do anything at all. But look at this, I'm gonna grab this control and pull the level down. And as I do, you can see I'm making quite a substantial adjustment to the gain at a specific frequency. And if I now begin to adjust the Q control, you can see exactly what's happening. Now, this white line represents the adjustment that is going to be made to my music in this case, because that's the clip I've got the effect on. So the wider that Q shape, or the lower the number, the more frequencies are gonna be affected by the adjustment I'm making. And the higher the Q number, the tighter the adjustment. But I always get a curve, which makes the adjustment to the sound a lot more natural than, for example, a fixed band graphic equalizers. And we've got one of those in EDIUS as well. I'm going to just pull down around about the one kilohertz range, and I'm probably gonna leave the higher frequencies alone because although the sibilance, the high whistles and noises of speech can go up to about 16 kilohertz, 16,000 hertz, most of the information is around about here. 
This is how you reshape the audio using a parametric EQ effect. I'm going to click OK, and if you have a listen now, you're probably going to find that the speech is a lot more audible. She's young, beautiful, with fire in her belly, and frustrated with what life has to... Now, it might benefit from a little bit more experimentation, but there's definitely an improvement. And so you could do worse than make a preset of a parametric equalizer effect that you've already configured this way, which I'm going to do now. I'm going to drag this into my effect palette and just name it something like um, clear vocals. And that way you can very quickly apply this effect to music. And the benefit is, of course, that you can see both of these are pretty loud. I can keep the rest of the frequencies relatively loud in the music while still having clarity in those vocals, in that voiceover. Otherwise, I would have to lower the overall volume for the music. This just allows me to bring a bit more richness to the mix. So that's working with the parametric equalizer effect in EDIUS. Thank <laughs> you.